Okay, hello everyone. So what I want to do is uh, finish up where we left off in lecture. We weren't able to complete the SALC for the A1 prime uh, molecular orbital. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, in this case, we're working on the trigonal planar molecule, uh, so for trioxide. Um, and where the orbitals that we were in, in particular interested in were the oxygen 2P X orbitals that are directed towards the sulfur center. So we drew it out um, this way. Okay. Um, and we had applied the projection operator to a test wave function. Okay. And the test wave function can be any of the um, uh, orbitals that are going to be part of our group orbitals. And so in this case, it's called this A, B, and C. These are the oxygen group orbitals. And we had picked uh, A as our test, uh, as our test wave function, okay? So we applied the projection operator on phi A, and in the class, we used the point group D3H to find what the projection, uh, the projection of that phi A would give us for the SALC. Okay, and we found the following result. It was 4 phi A plus 4 phi B plus 4 phi C. Okay? All right, what you must do now is find the simplest form of this wave function and normalize it. Okay? Um, so first of all, you get rid of the common denominator, in this case, 4. So you divide by 4. In this case, 4. So we get um, uh, phi A plus phi B plus phi C. Okay. Note that now we have to deal with finding that normalization constant in front of the uh, wave function. And so normalization constant is going to be equal to 1 over the root of the sum of the coefficient squared for each one of these here. And so in this case, we have n is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. Okay? And that's just equal to 1 over root 3. All right, so now we can write out, let's erase this here. Now we can write out our SALC uh, for A1 prime. This is the group orbitals of A1 prime as equal to 1 over root 3. Okay, and now I can, I'm going to write P A two P X because that's the function that we're using the two P X of oxygen, the one on the B position, and the one in the C position. All right. So now I have my function nicely uh, normalized. What we can see here, it's just the um, symmetric addition of all the 2px orbitals. So basically, they would be filled in like this. And this is our A1 prime salc. OK, now we want to combine this salc with the molecular orbital that symmetry matches with uh, with the salcs, right? So the atomic orbital that we're interested in is the sulfur central uh, atoms atomic orbital. And so in this case, we, we looked at uh, sulfur, we uh, wrote down all the symmetries that uh, its atomic orbitals correspond to, the two, uh, the 3s, um, the 3pz, the 3px, and the 3py. 
And we found that the 3S transforms as the A1 prime symmetry. So when we're writing the molecular orbital, MO, for bonding corresponding to the A1 prime symmetry, we're going to combine uh, the sulfur 3S orbital. It has some contribution C1 plus C2 over root 3 because we're taking our normalization constant and putting it right here. Okay, but we still don't know how much the salts contribute to the MO and the sulfurs 3S contribute to the MO. Okay, so those are, you just leave them as open variables because those have to be calculated in order to uh, be obtained. Okay, so, and then we just add up. We just bring down this south down here. Okay, so now we have the wave function in mathematical form. And in chemistry, of course, we like diagrams and schematics. And so what we want to do is now translate that to making the MO here. Um, and so we would just add now the 3s orbital. So this is now the A1 MO. You can see how it's all in phase now.